Hey everyone, um, sorry I'm not in class today, but um, instead of just giving you independent study time, I wanted to make sure we used our time wisely, and so I am going to try to make a video um, that's going to go over some of the stuff that we have been doing with solubility, equilibrium, and KSP. I think it's one of the harder topics that we cover, and so I want to make sure that we have a strong foundation before we go to take our exam next week. Um, please remember that your exam is next week, Wednesday. If you're planning on taking it early on Tuesday, make sure you shoot me an email so that I can make sure I have copies available and also so that I can um, plan what periods and so forth. So just let me know if you're planning on taking it early. Um, I do recommend that you take it early rather than Take it late if you can accommodate that. Um, cool. Okay, so these videos I can only take in 15-minute increments, so we might have a couple videos. It's also 1.30 a.m., so we'll see how, how far I can get. Um, okay, so let's see. We're talking about KSP um, problems or solubility equilibrium problems. You guys will have to bear with me. I've only used... Um, the Surface Pro once before, so my handwriting's not very good. Also don't know how to do everything. We'll see how it goes. Um, what am I writing? Solubility equilibrium. So probably you want to take notes too. Okay. Um, so remember that a solubility equilibrium problem is always going to involve an ionic substance breaking down. So as you've seen from the quizzes and stuff that we've done, our first step is always going to be writing an equation, right? So for example, we might be dealing with AgCl and we would just break it down into its ions. Remember that when we write these equations, you always want the solid to go to the aqueous. No matter what's actually happening in a solubility equilibrium, we do always put the solid as the reactants and then we write the ions as the products. It is important that you have the right mole to mole ratio so in other words balance the equation it's also important that you have the correct charges now typically a rubric says it's not important if you have the states but i think it's actually really important that you have the states because later when we write the ksp expressions we need to remind ourselves not to include the solid um so you know whenever you can please go ahead and include the states also, if they're using the word solubility or you have some indication because they say KSP that it is a solubility equilibrium problem, then you know it's always going to go solid to aqueous. There's no other form of that. Um, so let's just take a look here. If I was doing BaOH2, right, I'm just trying to remind you here that you need to make sure you know your charges, right? You will lose the point if you don't have the correct charges and don't forget to balance here. Okay, that's gonna be really important, and it's something we look over when we're trying to work quickly. Um, okay, so once you have that, then the next step is mostly going to be to write your solubility equilibrium expression. So KSP, remember, stands for solubility product constant. It's just the K expression having to do with an equation of solubility, right? Um, so it's just like all K expressions, products over reactants, and we'll always use concentration since we'll never have gases, it's not gonna be pressures. And because we don't include a solid in any type of K expression, our denominator is always gonna be one, so we don't have to write anything there. So that's for the AgCl. If I was gonna do the barium hydroxide, and hopefully a lot of what I'm doing right now is review. Don't forget that square, right? That two right there is coming from the two um, as the coefficient, right? Um, so there's that. Cool. So let's see. Um, the next thing that's going to come up is this idea of um, icing, right? So just like general equilibrium, when we're given a solubility equilibrium problem, we normally have two versions of an ice table, right? So, oh, hmm. Okay, I think we're back here. 
No. Try again. Maybe I go too close to the edge. Okay. There we go. So we're going to have two versions of an ice table, right? Two versions of ice. Um, version one gives KSP asks for molar solubility. or asks for um, concentration at equilibrium. But I think more often they use the word solubility in this type of problem, but certainly they could just ask for um, a concentration of something. So I'll just write X, right? But they could ask for a concentration here. The second version of ice is going to be where they give solubility and ask for KSP, right? So either we're calculating KSP or we're calculating molar solubility. Remember that if ever they give something that they're calling molar solubility, right, oof, geez, okay. Um, no, I can't write, oh, no, I'm just scribbling. Eh, ignore that, okay. Molar solubility is always going to be that x value in an ice table. It's always going to be that x value. I've said that a bunch of times over the last couple of days, but I see everybody still making that mistake on their quiz. So remember that molar solubility will always be that x value. The other thing that you need to remember is that very often they won't give molar solubility. They might give another version of solubility. For example, they might say like, 426 grams of whatever substance um, dissolves in 200 milliliters, right? And so then you need to make sure that you take your grams to moles and then take your milliliters to liters and get a molar solubility by doing moles over liters. Um, I think in two quizzes, or maybe one problem, one quiz, we had that, right? But those are free points, right? Because we can all take grams into moles, and then we can all take milliliters into liters to get our molar solubility. Um, so just be aware that that is a conversion that we have to do very often in these problems. So um, let's just take a look real quick at a problem like this. I think I have to pause the video because I can't really make one up. I've got to look one up. Okay, so I just found um, one in the book in case you're wondering it's coming from page 750, um, but you can just follow along right here. I just needed it to give me an equation and some numbers. So um, this problem is calcium fluoride, so CaF2 that I am breaking into my ions. Balancing. Um, the information that I am provided with is the KSP. So they're telling me KSP is 3.9 times 10 to the negative 14th. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and ice. They are asking me for the molar solubility, the exact words they're using. Um, Calculate the solubility of CaF2 in grams per liter. And so that means I'm going to get it in moles per liter and just convert it to grams per liter. Remember when I have the solid, I don't have to do anything in my ice table. My initial is going to be zero because they didn't provide me with any other information. Plus x plus 2x. Zero. Oops, sorry, not zero. Ooh, let's see what we do. Oh, where did my purple pen go? Okay, um, x to x. Okay, now I'm gonna come over here and I'm, well, I'm gonna do it down here. Actually, I'm gonna say 3.9 times 10 to the negative 14th. That's my provided KSP equals x times 2x squared. Be cautious with your algebra here. A lot of students um, mess that up. So remember that 2x squared becomes 4x squared, like that. 
which means this whole thing ends up being 4x cubed equals 3.9 times 10 to the negative 14th. Go ahead and solve for x. And when I do that, I get 3.9 times 10. Nope, not that I get. Um, 2.1 times 10 to the fourth. So this is like the easiest version of a KSP problem, right? And this, of course, is in molarity. Um, this particular problem asked me to give it in grams per liter, so I could go ahead and convert that. I'm not going to do that right now. I know you guys know how to do that. Um, but when it's asking for solubility, essentially I'm solving for x, and I'll get my answer in molarity. Um, so this is that one type of problem where they provide me with KSP. They ask me for molar solubility or solubility or however they say that, right? They could also ask me what's the concentration of F minus. I could multiply that by 2 and get the answer because it was 2x for F minus. Um, so there's that. That's the first type of problem. Don't forget here they could also do a common ion problem. Um, and so that would be one where just let's take that same equation, right? CaF2 breaking into its ions. Include your states when you're being careful, right? Maybe they say something like they're doing this in a 0.1 molar NaF solution, right? Well, 0.1 molar NaF, right? NaF means I care about the F minus of the NaF, and so that means I have 0.1 molar NaF, which would just end up changing my ice table a little bit. Okay, and then I would do exactly the same stuff, but with um, the X and the 0.1 plus 2X. But remember when we have something like a number plus or minus an x value, if we have that small k, which in solubility, solubility we almost always do have that small k, then we can go ahead and make that assumption where we don't have to solve for a quadratic. So in other words, um, when I'm writing my KSP expression, I would write like x times 0.1 plus 2x but I would make that into x times 0.1, really. I can drop this 2x term, okay? And then fill in my solubility and solve and go, go from there. Um, so just be cautious of this common ion problem. Sometimes they'll have you do one without a common ion and then immediately do one with a common ion. Um, while we're here, don't forget that they can do some kind of Le Chatelier question as well, right? So they can ask something like, um, what would happen, we had this on a quiz yesterday, right? What would happen to the concentration of the Ca2 plus if the NaF was added? Well, if NaF was added, now this is different from the previous situation that I was talking about where we were doing it in an NaF solution. That's what this ice table is for. But really, I'm now talking about a different scenario. Okay, maybe to be clear, I'll make it a different scenario. So same equation. Right, same equation. And now the question just says, what would happen to the concentration of Ca2 plus if an NaF solution was added? Or more likely, an NaF solid was added. Well, ultimately, what would happen is we don't care about the Na because it's an alkali metal. It's always going to be a spectator. Also, we don't care about it because it's not showing up in our equation. Um, but we do care about this F here. This is going to be the F minus. So ultimately, we have the addition of F minus, a stress on the system. Le Chatelier says stress on a system. It's going to shift to remove that stress. So this reaction would shift backwards. <coughs> it shifts backwards. That means that our concentration of Ca will actually decrease because it will get used up in that backwards reaction. Ooh, I'm out of time, so click for the next video.